they tend to be like plastic, and I think you can only use them, as, you know, for a certain number of times, and then you chuck them. Uh, so my partner decided we should get the like sort of reusable, eco-friendly ones made of wool. Hello and welcome to another episode of the JJ and Hatman podcast where we're going to be doing a deep dive into hypothetical questions, weird news and other surreal commentary on the issues of today. I'm JJ and with me is, as always, is... Hatman. Hey, it's me, Hatman. <laughs> it's me, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's me. <laughs> what, me? <laughs> me? <laughs> Yeah, hey, what me? It's the curtain. Hey, Mister. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Yeah. So it's been nearly two weeks since we've spoken. Uh, how is it going with you lately? It's fine. Yeah. Um, I had a bit of a dilemma, I'll call it. Yeah. So you know, when you, I don't know if anyone's got a dryer. Probably not. But if you use a dryer, all your clothes come out pretty creased and it was pissing me off because I don't want to iron. I hate ironing. Ironing sucks. And I've never done it. I've never done it. I, 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 I've, it's always been something that like a few other people like, so, so weirdly, I, 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 you know, I think to some extent my mum did it when I was a kid. Mm. Um, and then like when I, when I first went away to university, when I was like 18, 19, I, I was under the impression that I was going to have to iron my clothes. And I was like, fuck that. And there was weirdly this this thing that with this, um, you know, when you're in the first year of uni, you're just usually parked in halls with like four or five other random people. Yeah. It was quite a motley crew of people that I was in with. They were all all right. They were all all right. But they were just like very much not the people that I was used to having hung out with, you know, they were not the kind of people that I had hung out with like during my teenage years, so, which is, which is not a bad thing. Like it's sort of, it's, it's like, that's part, that's sort of part of what uni is, you know, you go and mix with people, you know, that you wouldn't necessarily have met otherwise, you know? Yes. Yeah, it sounds like a very similar situation to that um, sort of flat that I stayed at that was for like young people and they'd be, mm. you know, they'd be like, stoners and goths and chabs and they'd all just sit and hang out together <laughs> right yeah and and, and it, it looked the same as well it was the same sort of layout it's like uh a, a shared kitchen maybe a shared bathroom and then like a bunch of tiny bedrooms in in like a little mini corridor it was the exact same sort of layout as that hmm. <clears throat> so anyway the, the the reason i brought it up was that i thought that i, I was under the impression that at some point I was going to have to iron clothes, you know, and I was, for some reason, I was dead against it. <laughs> um, so one, one of my handful of like flatmates was this really sort of posh. I think she was sort of, um, I think she was sort of British Indian. Right. Um, But she was from like uh, this really sort of posh. It seemed like she was like from this really sort of posh family from London. And, um, she sort of came to me because like, I don't know why she didn't, didn't ask any of our other housemates. The only other one I remember was this kid who had the room next to me, who was, it was quite nice, but he was like, he was epileptic and he was, he was like very gay. And right. he used to like play uh, like sort of stereotypically what I thought of as a time as like gay music, very loud <laughs> late at night. Like, I don't know, like pink for instance, right, okay. like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know whether that is stereotypically gay music, but you know, to me at the time, it, it, like you know, in in two thousand and seven or whatever it was, that was very stereotypically gay music. Yeah. You know? Um. Anyway, the point is that this this girl uh, offered to do all my ironing for me if I would, in exchange, get on the phone to her ex boyfriend and pretend to be her new boyfriend and threaten him. <laughs> and tell him to stop calling her right okay. <laughs> like on a, on a sort of occasional basis like i had to sort of pretend to be a, some some kind of hard man so this, <laughs> this guy she used to go out with would leave her alone yeah okay 
What was it? what did that sound like? Oh man, obviously this is going back at least fifteen years, but it it was something like, "Oi mate, oi mate, she's my bird now. You can fuck <laughs> off, pal. You can fuck right off. Yeah, yeah. I'll fucking do you. You can't." <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, it, it's very it was, scary. It's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all cliched. <laughs> As it transpired, I only had to do that once or twice, um, and that was all it took. And and then um, she did all my ironing for me. But the thing is, I've subsequently realised that actually, if if you do your 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 laundry proper and you you sort of take take it out of the dryer cycle at the right time and shake it, then you don't really need to iron it. Yeah. Well, I think I I don't know what the issue is with my dryer. It just seems to everything comes out creased. I don't do it myself. My partner does it because she doesn't trust anyone to do clothes. Uh, it's a Ah, okay. Is it a case of if she doesn't trust anyone, or is it a case of like in the past you've intentionally done it badly so that you don't have to do it again? Because that is a good trick. Well, this is one of the things I what, I was going to mention. <laughs> you know where it stems from. I've never actually. Yeah. Um, before we were together, I used to do all my own sort of washing, drying, that kind of stuff. Um, By then... we, you mean you and your partner, not you and me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, just to clarify. But when, once we got together, she was very keen to get it all done. And I think the the issue is she she had some really nice clothes in the past, and her dad like ruined them in the um in the washer, like mixed colours or something along those lines. Okay. So it's been a, a bit of a thing that she won't like trust anyone to do uh, the washing and drying, which is fine. You know, I'm not. I, it's just one fewer chore for me. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, oh, woe is me! Oh, woe is me! I don't get to do. I don't get to do the laundry. And uh, so, I wonder if it's, if it's part of her <laughs> method. Maybe there's too many clothes in there or something, or I don't know. Maybe it's the setting she puts it on. But the dryer always, they're quite deep creases, right? So, um, if I stand up, I look like I've, you know, I'm wearing a used piece of origami paper. Um, <laughs> So I bought these. So one of the things you can do is you can get these balls, dryer balls. They're not like ornamental. Dryer balls. Yeah, they're not like an ornamental balls that you put on your dryer, like a truck balls. Um, mm. You put them in the dryer, and they're supposed to bounce around and try and like, you know, <laughs> soften out creases and coax clothes into being more uncreased. Clothes coaxing bouncy balls. <laughs> but, I mean, they tend to be like plastic, and I think you can only use them, as, you know, for a certain number of times, and then you chuck them. Uh, so my partner decided we should get the, like, sort of reusable, eco-friendly ones made of wool. Now, thinking back, okay. that was probably a bad idea, considering m most of us have a mi minor allergy to wool. Um, well, most of your family. Yeah, me specifically. If I s sit near wool, my throat gets scratchy and my eyes start like itching. Um, and yeah, that's a, so that was a bad idea. But also, they showed up, and they're like these woolen balls from New Zealand, and they've got really quite <laughs> quite good reviews. So looks online they have really good reviews but i didn't read the bad reviews and i should have because it seems a bit of a lottery in these balls um where the wool comes from from the sheep and apparently we got our it might wool. come from the sheep's oh god oh god because this wool stinks it stinks like sheep oh god piss. <laughs> And um, gonna, yeah, like taint, taint wool, maybe <laughs> straight off the gooch <laughs> of the sheep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would, Im I would imagine that that there is wool to be had there. Yeah. And yeah, I I've never thought about this before, but I would imagine that someone is getting the the short end of the stick, if you will, <laughs> and getting the gooch, the gooch wool, yeah. because they're not going to just throw that bit away, are they? Mm. Or maybe it's just. I mean, there's. I went on holiday recently to near Skipton Apple Tree Wick, which is like a very rural um, countryside place. 
and there's mm. you know there's lots of sheep about and you and you walk through the sheep shields the fields they're not called shields because they've got sheep in fields and the, and you can see dotted around there's just a few shitty ass sheep every other, you know it's like some of them oh just... where oh where where the, where the turds get stuck in there yeah in like the their ass is a yeah wound. yeah yeah and it's yeah yeah I wonder if it's just a I don't know maybe it's like someone who doesn't um use deodorant or wipe properly like in the human race is it just some sheep like um you know personal hygiene issue there do they okay. not like do the other sheep possibly. shun them possibly i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to give an alternative view on it is that i think that obviously sheep are not um i mean they don't have opposable thumbs they don't have no, the ability not. to wipe their own well, obviously, they don't have. But beyond <laughs> that, they don't have the ability to sort of stretch back and wipe their own asses in any way, mm. you know. Because they're not I rub think them up the against the tree or the, something. I suppose they probably could, but the most sheep are. I don't. Maybe maybe some of them think of that. Some of them don't. What I, what I am going to suggest is that I think that most sheep that you see, um, you know, on farms have been selectively bred to have much longer wool, so that was never a problem in their evolutionary past. I'm just thinking on my feet with this thing here. I'm just sort of, just sort of saying shit as it's coming into my, yeah. my brain from my, from my mouth. But like, like in the past, it probably wouldn't have happened as much because they hadn't have been selectively bred. Whereas now, it's going to happen sometimes, and it's not like they can wipe their asses. Well, have you ever seen like a sheep that's been out, of, you know, got lost from the field and found again, and they, you know, they're just matted in enormous like clumps of fur. Kind of... Yeah, like a mountain man sheep. Yeah, do you do you ever remember like white guys with dreads? We used to call them crusties, or my brother did at least. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I used to call them crusties. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's still it. It, it, it yeah, it, it's it's a general term for like it doesn't have to be guys. It could be could be could be females as well. Like white people with dreads yeah. usually do ketamine and hang around squat parties. Yeah, crusties. It's a it's a thing. But yeah. there, there used to be a crusty that worked at a library that I used to bring the kids to, and he had like he was probably in his maybe late forties, but he had like huge dreads. He must have had them for years. But they did really look like when you see a sheep that's been lost for a long time. Oh, okay. So it was yeah, yeah. I think Louis C.K.'s got a bit about this, and he's talking about this homeless guy with with dreadlocks, and he is like, yeah, it wasn't like cool hacky sack medical marijuana guy dreadlocks. It was like a dreadlock of neglect. <laughs> yeah, like... exactly. It was like that, and it was so heavy it was pulling his hair out, so he was bald. <laughs> it, the God. middle of his head I mean, was bald. I can, I can picture it. Yeah, it's like pulling it backwards, yeah. despite like the weight, the weight of this just fucking. Fungusy dreadlock. Yeah, it's like that's the point. Well, it's well <laughs> beyond the point where you just let go and say, "Okay, start again." Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because if you saw a sheep like that, you'd be like, "Oh, you poor thing." But then when it's like <laughs> you've a been neglected, yeah, yeah, yeah you've been neglected. Like, a human. like, like so, so, some human is not is not sufficiently looked after you. Whereas with, with someone like, with a, with a crusty like that, it's like, oh, you've not sufficiently looked after yourself, have you? Yeah. You know, you've got no one else to blame. And, you know, imagine a team of, like, rescuers coming in to the library where he was working and just, like, putting him in a cage and <laughs> sedating what? him. Like the, the, hel the helivets. <laughs> the helivets swinging. Yeah. <laughs> just driving him off to a... Uh... To shear his yeah. shear his mane off, yeah. um, <laughs> while he's like screaming in protest. No, no. Well, that's probably what's happening with a sheep as well. Going. That's, like, I mean, that, that, yeah, yeah, I like it like this. You, Stop you, it. Made, you made Rah. it sound like a, a sheep, a sheepish voice, a sheep-like <laughs> voice. Like no, no, no. <laughs> Leave me alone. No. <laughs> I like it like this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what the sheep are saying when they're getting sheared, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, so anyway, yeah, there's these woolen balls <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I've got, and they put them in the dryer, and all my clothes came out smelling like piss. And then I looked online at how oh, to fix God. it, um, and they said I'll just run them through a cycle with a towel to suck the to absorb the piss. Um, 
and <laughs> it did not help. And then again, my clothes. Uh, did your did your towel also become? Oh, also was start to smell it was it was like a gammy towel. You know, you've every household's got like a bunch of gammy towels they use for like yeah. jobs you wouldn't use your normal towel for. Uh, yeah, again, again, Limmy's Limmy's got a good bit about that. <laughs> um, about the, the the gammy towels, I, I I maybe I'll send it to you later. But he's basically like hanging the towels out, and they look like they've they've like stained with shit. But it's like no, it's just the towel that you use to mop up like when you have a bad spill. And he's like hanging yeah. them out like to dry outside his house and waiting for his neighbor to look out his window and going like, yeah, I know they're minging. Don't I know they're well minging. Like <laughs> just so you don't don't think I don't know that they're minging. Yeah, it's not. I don't. I'm not cleaning myself with this towel. Yeah, yeah, it's like the the gammy towel that you use to. Mm. Yeah, like if you if you spill beer on the floor or something, it's like I'll get that sh that shitty towel. Yeah, gravy off, gravy off, your, <laughs> clean gravy off your cat. You know that kind of job. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, enough about me and my balls. How, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, as I as I sort of alluded to earlier, I've been away on a trip. Yeah, to a city, a, sh a, a city, a city called Xi'an. Yeah, so that's how you pronounce it, because you sent me something, and I, I, I'm pretty sure that's how I was pronouncing it in my head. Xi'an. Xi'an, Xi'an. Yeah. yeah. Um, it used to be called Chang'an. It's like uh, this very famous like historical city in China. Uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It was pretty good. Uh, it's well, it's well famed for the terracotta warriors, oh, terracotta okay, army. Yeah. Did you see that? I did see that. Uh, that was the shittiest thing I saw when I was there. Was it actually? Well, yeah. the thing itself, the thing itself wasn't that bad. It's just that the problem in China is because they've got 1.4 billion people. If there's anything that's like better than mediocre and it's not scalable. It's gonna be over fucking crowded. Right. Okay. So this, obviously, there's, there's only one of them. There's only one in the whole country, and I just went there on a random day, and there was about, you know, there were tens of thousands of of Chinese tourists there, and when you got to the actual sort of main event, you know, like the actual, there's there's like a sort of museum and sort of gardens outside and. All, all this other stuff that's sort of part of it, but not not really the the thing you actually came to see. When you get to the actual thing itself, which is the the terracotta army itself, um, there's so many people just like shoving each other out of the way. It's like a it was like being in a mosh pit <laughs> to just to get just to get to the front, just to where you can sort of actually see the actual thing itself. You know, just for that just for that sort of money shot of that sort of self selfie that everyone's wanting to get. You know, yeah. so it's, it's a selfie like the you know the Eiffel Tower where they're holding it up. You just like get on your knees and pretend to blow one of the soldiers. <laughs> well, no, there's not even that. That's the other thing is there's not even any particular money shot. It's just like everyone there, everyone there. And this is a I've actually spoken to Chinese people about this, and they they literally say that the point of going to somewhere like the Eiffel Tower is to get the photo. It's not right. like you go there to see it and the photo is a secondary thing, which which it is certainly to me. And I would think to a lot of Western people, the point of going somewhere like that is to see it, right? Yeah. And then getting a photo is something you do while you're there. Right. But I've spoken to a lot of Chinese people and they say, it's, no, it's the opposite. The point of going, the main thing is to get a fucking selfie in front of the thing. And then actually seeing it is sort of of secondary importance. Could you not introduce them to like Photoshop and show them how to edit themselves into like a? I uh, I mean <laughs> I've 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 genuinely wondered about that myself. I think maybe the 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 fear is of getting caught out in that. I think a lot of people do do that actually, hmm. but the the thing is that it would be so embarrassing to get caught out in that. Yeah. Like and exposed for having done that. That means that it's not it's not more widespread. Right. Um. You could always just you know what I mean, like do it and then just never, you know, phrase everything in a way that never actually says that you were there. And then if you do, do get caught out, say, yeah, well, I never said um, I went there. 
Well, I, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess my, my point is that in general, I enjoyed Xi'an, but like the actual thing that I went there to see was just, it was difficult to enjoy because it was too overcrowded with people trying to take a selfie in front of it. I mean, if that is, makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's just like a, like a, I don't know, like a bigger version of like Bill and Ben, the flower, flower, flower pot men, isn't it? Like anywhere really. It's like, what that that was a weird fucking choice of choice of, of frame of reference there <laughs> a fucking children's children's tv show that was put out what in the 60s 70s <laughs> maybe when our parents were kids well, but that it's definitely definitely had its day by the time we were born I, I, i'm wondering <laughs> actually were they made of terracotta bill and ben uh i mean i th- yeah uh, i I don't know. Or... Ter- I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know if terracotta is an actual thing. I think. I think it. It might be, but I think it's from the. I think it's from the Italian or the Latin, like terra meaning earth and cotta meaning cooked. So right. it might just be a, a thing that means any kind of sort of clay that's baked in a kiln, you know. Yeah, and I, I think Bill and Ben are less of an army and more of um. A pair of yeah. Egypts. Couple. Are they a couple? <laughs> Were they a couple? Is it is it like a sort of uh, Eric and Ernie or or Bert and Ernie kind Bert of thing? Ernie, where yeah. they where they well or, or Eric and Ernie because they used to sleep in the same bed as well. Um, where, where it's like implied that they're well, it's sometimes implied that they're both heterosexual, but they do sleep in the same bed and in many <laughs> ways behave like a couple. <laughs> I can't remember anything about the show actually, other than that they're made out of pots, garden pots. <laughs> Um, they share the same garden. We're talking, we're, talk, we're talking about Bill and Ben now, not not uh, Morecambe and Wise. <laughs> they share the same garden. Does actually sound like a euphemism? <laughs> it sounds weirdly weirdly suggestive, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, Ooh, you can make anything that, sound like it. You know, it means yeah, no, it's it's true, it's true. It's true. Like I definitely remember being in the pub before, and there was some sort of sporting match on, and I think me and my mates had come back from like a house party, and you know when you've You've been up at a house party all night, mm. and you go to the pub the next day, and it's sort of like Sunday, mo- Sunday morning, Sunday lunchtime, just opening, and it's a few old boys coming in for a pint, but you you're still off your head from the night before. Yeah, and, and I remember and you think sitting you're being on conspicuous, sitting up... but you're actually like sticking out <laughs> like a st- sore thumb. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because this was like a local pub in in Queensbury, <laughs> and uh, me me and my mates were sat under the television. In, in this little local pub and there was like some kind of sporting match on and everything everything that the commentator said sounded suggestive in some way <laughs> like 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 we were just sat there like pissing ourselves because everything was like oh and they need to change their balls now and <laughs> now they need to change ends yeah and then, like literally we 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 finished laughing at the thing before and then we'd sort of calm down a bit and start listening again, and he'd say something else, which was another form of innuendo. Yeah, I mean, I think some of them do it intentionally a little bit. Um... I think they do actually. I think they do. I think that the yeah, they they are doing a bit of a double entendre on purpose. Yeah, I think. Um, I'm sure I've seen a clip of. I think it's actually an interviewer interviewing like. I can't remember if it's a sports person or an actor. And uh, she goes, oh, you ha- probably had to beat off a lot of men. T- oh, yeah, it must be a, an actor. Because she's like, oh, you have to, must have had to beat off a lot of men to get this role. And he was like, <laughs> what? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you know, beat off a, lo- a lot of other, like, actors to get this role. Because it's a popular role or something. <laughs> he was like, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, totally, Come on, totally. you know what you're doing. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so the Terracotta Army, it's all right, but just look at it online. That's what I'm getting out of this. Isn't there like a virtual tour of it as well? I'm sure it's one of those things that they've got like a virtual tour of online. Like you can look around it on a video. I'm sure they probably do. I didn't look into that. Uh, it's been a bucket list thing for me ever since I read uh, Interesting Times by Terry Pratchett yeah. when I was like 10. So it's been like a bucket list thing for me for like 25 years, um, and I, I guess it also it's hard it's hard for something to live up to that. 
for it being sort of on your bucket list for 25 years. Uh, the thing itself is cool. It's just like I found it was a little bit ruined by like just being overcrowded and that. Um, the city itself was really cool. Xi'an was was really cool. Xi'an was really it's really beautiful. It's got like these uh, city walls that you can walk these sort of ancient ramparts kind of thing mm. and it's got like uh, a bunch of towers and pagodas and it's got this cool little um, area called the Muslim Quarter where they have like a lot of like Chinese Chinese Muslims and oh and it also this is the other thing that I want to talk about is it has some some great um, local dishes that I tried and one is one that I, I, I just sent you just now actually a link to yeah, the um, soup and noodle. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it, well, it's like, yeah, it's called uh, Biang, Biang Mian, I think it's called. Um, and the, the the reason why uh, I thought it was noteworthy to talk about that is that it's the most complex Chinese character. Yeah, I did see the character. It's like 58 strokes or something. It's like, fit, yeah, it's ridiculous, man. Like, so I, I just, I actually ordered it by accident. I went into this local restaurant and i was like oh i want some noodles uh i'll have that one because i can recognize like the character for noodles you know but this this other character that was in front of it i was like i don't know what the fuck that is but i'm sure it's fine (laughs) like this enormous like complex character yeah this this ridiculous like how can they expect anyone to fucking realistically learn this stuff (laughs) We haven't talked about this in advance, right? No. Um, I'm gonna ask you for I'm gonna ask you for your honest answer to the following question, and I hope that you give the answer that I'm expecting you're gonna give because otherwise it's gonna completely, you know, frustrate my theory of it. But okay, let's let's say you were in a scenario where you were dealing with maybe a taxi driver, or someone like an electrician or a plumber, who was working in your house, right? Yeah. And you didn't know that person's name. You didn't know their, their first name or their last name. What term of address would you use to that person? Um, probably mate. Cheers, mate. Ex- exactly, mate. Yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping you were going to say. Yeah. And I think I think it's pretty obvious to anyone from like a, uh, most English-speaking countries that you'd use either mate or maybe maybe mates less in America, uh, but something like pal or buddy maybe in america but in 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 like the uk australia you know most other english speaking countries it, it'd be mate or something like that you know well that's a, i mean this is a bit of um uh subconscious gendering of roles isn't it <laughs> because well may, maybe but i sometimes call women mates you know um i think for a, if it was a woman I'd, i'm not even sure how i would Address. You might say love. You might you might say love if it was like a woman. It, well, if Cheers you're northern, if you're from Yorkshire, if yeah. you're northern, I do, you, I might, don't know. you might say love. I think I've been kind of um, what's the word um, conditioned now to 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 not do that because I feel like some it's, some people find things like that more offensive than they did. Like saying cheers, love to a woman, might upset them i don't know maybe that... me, me, I maybe some... but I, I i still do it i'd still do it and not worry about it and i've never yeah. been i've i tell you what i've never done it and been called out for it that <laughs> i recall you know what i mean i'm <laughs> cheers babe cheers love cheers, cheers, babe. cheers sexy. <laughs> like a, a, a female a female bus driver and you're like, oh nice one sugar tits yeah yeah oh, hey, <laughs> get on the bus oh, call him duck yeah cheers duck <laughs> I, I think I think there are certain parts of England where like duck, or like maybe in Scotland like hen, mm. or something like that. Like I th- I think that I'd still fly. Honey, you know. Yeah. Cheers, honey. <laughs> As I say, nice one, sugar tits. <laughs> you get on the bus. Slap her ass. You pay. You pay. For, you pay. You pay for your ticket. <laughs> like oh, cheers, cheers, toots. Yeah, I think it'd be very hard to slap but... a bus driver's ass actually. Thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, no, you have <laughs> to like... open the little door. You have to, you have to, you have to like, o- like physically force the little door open. You know, <laughs> like, like with a crowbar, with a crowbar. Just... You have to like lift them up over your shoulder like a fireman and like spank their ass like that. 
in front of everyone and then turn them back around and like sort of plant like a little kiss on the cheek and go, oh, cheers, right touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Think... Put them back down in the seat. You see, it's, those... it's like a it's like a six it's like a sixty year old woman <laughs> <laughs> with with like with like a bit of like a like you know like an older sort of post menopausal woman's mustache. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> it's like this elderly woman, and she just all she did was like give you your ticket, and you you force open the door, <laughs> pick her up, spank her ass, spank her ass, and put her back down and go kiss her gently go, on the cheek. Cheers, cheers, sugar tits. And then you like put your hand on her hand and slowly like you know caress it, you know from, from <laughs> with your arm behind no, you was, as you look behind I, I, you and smile as you walk off the bus. I was gonna, I was, no, oh no, this is when you get on the bus. Like I was gonna say, you then go sit down, sit down. <laughs> sit obviously down. at the back. If anyone's already, if anyone's already sat there, you just look at them and they move. <laughs> Because you're clearly you're clearly the most alpha male on this bus. Well, I, you know, in my head canon, I think this is what these imaginary offended people feel like happens every time you say <laughs> love to them. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. In their head, it's like um, the same as that whole scenario, that bizarre, surreal scenario that you've just described. The reason that I I raised this uh, whole point was you you made it about gender. Which I suppose yeah. it could be mate. I I was I was gonna contrast it with um, you know what you know what you call someone like that in China. Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> there, there there is a very standard term of address that you use, particularly with taxi drivers, but you would also probably use with like an electrician or someone who was working in your home. Boss. And it's. Not far off. It's um in Chinese it's shufu, shufu, which yeah. literally translates as master. All right, master. Yeah. You can yeah you can hear it in like kung fu movies and stuff like shufu. Yeah. It's like master, you know, and it's it's sort of saying that that person is um, the master of their craft, you know, even if their craft is just being a taxi driver, you know. Yeah, there's enough. That's a, I mean that's a craft in itself. Driving a taxi, driving recklessly endangering lives no i'm kidding i'm just pissed off because yesterday when i was driving um with my family in the back on the motorway there was just a taxi driver like up my ass the whole time um <laughs> and i'm like he was sat he was sat on the seat beneath you he was sat on the seat <laughs> beneath you <laughs> like, his his hard on was like the fucking gear stick that you were fucking no, whacking it's... off he was no, literally was, up um, your ass a little lego figure <laughs> That the kid left in the seat. Oh, okay. But no, no, he's like so close behind me. No, I, I, I understand what you meant. It just, it just, it was just funny that the thing you said sounded sort of gay. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it, no, it had to take the piss a bit. In fact, two of them peed me off because one of them I was on the motorway, and I'm doing like 73 anyway, so I'm not like slow, and um, trying to overtake, you know, a truck. And this guy was so close behind me. Like, if any, if I had a stop for anything or even slow down, he'd have just been in my rear end. That sounds gay as well. Lots of driving terms sound gay, apparently. It did sound pretty <laughs> gay. So it's I, like sports terms. It's like sports. It's like most most masculine terms or most masculine sort of fields of endeavor. Yeah. Use a lot of terms. Use a lot of terms that can easily be subvertive to sound sort of homoerotic <laughs> in um, a way that to me is very amusing yeah so he was up my ass and <laughs> <laughs> got in front of this truck and then he must have just shot up to like 90 because he just flew past when I you know when I got into the left lane after going around this truck and it's like dude come on man no one's in that much of a hurry and then when I was going round a roundabout you know you give way to the right there was no one at the right someone flew round the roundabout so bloody fast he almost like came into the side panel of my car um, and it was another taxi driver and the people behind me beeped like really loud to let me know he was like flying round um yeah and i had to get out of his way so i just think you know i don't know maybe it's a uk specific thing but they just drive very recklessly maybe it's just a leeds thing actually because oh. it was i don't think i've noticed it as much around where i live but in leeds it's pretty bad Fucking leads. 
Please, please, please. No, I, th- I, th- I, I, th- I think that like that's sort of pretty universal, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, but what what I was going to say is that I think that these two terms of address, um, mate versus shuffle, kind of indicate something more broadly about the difference between Western and Eastern culture. Yeah. Like mate is very much emphasizing to me, like we're we're both we're both friends, we're both equal, you know. Yeah. Whereas in in China, it's a bit more Whereas... like a you know you're my superior in this. Um... I well maybe, but I don't think so because I think like, you know, half the people that use taxis are very much doing better than a taxi driver. You know, like it's emphasizing not not. A relationship, but their position in society in general, right? If that makes sense, like they, irrespective of whether I'm sort of, you know, sort of above you or below you, you have a certain like mastership of your craft and are worthy of respect, irrespective yeah. of what of, of the relationship between you and me. Whereas, whereas, mate, it's more like emphasizing like it doesn't matter what your position is or what my position is. As far as this goes, we're equals. You yeah, know? I mean, I don't, I don't know how far you, you, people see it as that. Again, maybe subconsciously. Me, ne- me neither. Bit. Me neither. Yeah, it's just a, a different tone of respect, but maybe boils down to the same kind of thing. Even, I'm not sure. Yeah, you'd have. Maybe, to to maybe, yeah. Anyway, anyway, that's about about all I had to say about that at this point. How about some uh, some weird news? Well, I did have. Um, you know, I had a little thing to mention. Um, oh, yeah. Go on. Apparently, one of the actors from Home Alone 2 was arrested. Um, I'm not sure which one. Well, which one? Which one? Just looking oh. at the... Uh, I think it was... To me, it makes... I mean, because <clears throat> the dad's dead. Yeah. Which one is uh, it? Was it, one of, was it one, of, one of the two burglars? Was it either um, um, Stern or... Oh, God. What's he called from... from... Goodfellas, the guy from Goodfellas. Uh, just a minute. I'm just trying to find. There's a there's a mug shot. I'll just show you. Um. Right. See, can I paste this directly into it? I'm just sending the mug shot. There we go. That's the mug shot. Are you, are you doing it on? Um. So that's. I can't remember who that you was. You're doing it on Discord. Yeah. Can Oh, you're on your phone. Can you see that? So mm. it's one of the actors from Home Alone 2. I think it might be the bird lady from the mugshot. Bird, you know the one? <laughs> Feed the bird, stop <laughs> and bag. Yeah. Looks a bit like it. No, that was a that was a different movie. That was that was Mary Poppins. But <laughs> that was it. But I know I know exactly who you mean. Oh shit! But yeah. like yeah. No, she's, she's Mary Poppins. Oh, there's a yeah, but then there's a pigeon lady. Yeah, there, there was there was a, there was a crazy pigeon lady in Home Alone, but it's, it's she didn't sing woman, feed no. the bird. She didn't she didn't sing feed the birds tough and so back. <laughs> she like, should have done. Like she was in, like she was in some she was some Edwardian musical. Like, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, Home Alone two is a Edwardian musical. Might have been quite a good. Uh... <laughs> well, they they use they used tuppence in 1990s. New York City. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, have you seen the picture? The one that I sent. So there's a. No, shot. I have you have you sent it through Discord? Because I can't can't see it. Oh. Um. Maybe it's me being incompetent using this platform. I don't know. Probably is. Oh, in fact, it's the um. You know the person who like he he sees in the hotel, and he asks. Where directions from? Who only appears briefly? Um, Trump. <laughs> Is it Trump? Uh, yeah, that's that's the guy. <laughs> anyway, so he's been arrested. Oh, was, it? was this a wind? Was this a wind up? Actually... <laughs> he, he, he's, he's had his mug shot like released, and one of so I'm not going to go into ins and outs of it because I don't really give a shit. Um, well, <laughs> but one of the things that came out of it that I, I, I saw was that he you can self-report your height and weight right when you you know when you're sort of booked and he said he yeah. was six foot three and 210 pounds which i mean is obviously a lie 
But yeah, I mean, why are people so unimaginative? Like, if I got booked and they asked me how much I, my height and weight was, I I mean, they literally literally say something like I'm two foot tall and I weigh more than the sun. <laughs> Right. Do you, do you know? Do you know what I think? I do you know what I think that is? Is he's definitely not that height and weight. Yeah. He's definitely not that height and weight. He's definitely a bit shorter than that and a lot fatter than that. If he were that height, you know. But you know what I think? He's it, the calculation he's done in his mind is this is the tallest and thinnest I can s- say that I am. That people who already are sucking my ass will believe. <laughs> like the people, the people, the people, the people that that already hate him, of which there are many, including ourselves, will never believe that that's true, and nor will nor will anyone who's even neutral. But yeah. the people that are already are already sucking his sucking his his fucking gooch, uh, would will fucking believe that because it's just with just within the realm of possibility. Well, I think in reality he's about I think he's about six one, and he's prob he's fat enough that he he weighs more than that, you know. But that's that's just just within the realms of possibility for the people who already love him. You yeah. Know? Well, the thing is, those people are so like absurd and like you know he can do anything and get away with it. Is that he could say he was like nineteen foot tall and weighed more than the sun, and they'd be like, "Yep, that's true. He is." <laughs> like you can see <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah. You can see him from like three states away. Uh, he's up tall. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's def- that's definitely true of a, cer- a certain number of of his yeah his followers. Yeah. So there was even yeah. people posting like in solidarity mug shots of themselves, a print out of the like American judicial system logo at the back, you know, like the the like police logo or whatever it is. It's like the whatever mm. jurisdiction he, jurisdiction he was in at the time behind him. They've got like a a, a like printed out low resolution pixelated version of that stuck on their wall behind them and they're like we stand in solidarity with you donald (laughs) (laughs) just that you know i don't often say donald without saying trump and thinking about it you know donald is quite a It's just a funny. It's an name, unusual isn't it? name. Like, how, <laughs> it's just funny. yeah, it's an inherently. I mean, how how many Donalds are there? There's Donald, Donald Trump, uh, Ronald McDonald, and Donald Duck. And, and I can't think of any others. Donald Glover. Is that one? Uh, Ronald McDonald popularized it. Or old McDonald back in the day. McDonald. Old yep, McDonald. Donald, he had a farm. Donald. Donald Duck, obviously. Yeah, Donald Duck. Yeah. So you know. They're the real Donalds of the world, not this fake ass orange Donald. Um, but yeah, let's get, get, move on to some weird news. Okay, I've got a couple of stories for you. So you can choose between two. Uh, the headlines are parents warned after cracking eggs on toddlers' heads in TikTok trend, or right. customer, customers warned of text pest delivery drivers asking for dates and sex. So I've heard a bit about the text pest stuff. Um, I've seen. A okay, few. so what's your, what's your understanding of it? Uh, the you know, it, I think it, I don't know if it's in America or I don't think you get it so much here. This was based. UK. This was based on no. This was based on a sur- the the article I'm reading is based on a survey in Britain. Oh, is it in right. UK? I didn't realize. Yeah. I mean, it, I suppose if I'm sure it, I'm sure it, I'm sure it's a phenomenon in in, in most developed countries. If, most yeah. countries in the world. Like your delivery driver has access to your number in case anything goes yeah. wrong. And then if they deliver mm. to your house and, and they see it's like a smoking hot babe, they start like pestering them after. Like, hey, you want to go on a date? I'm a delivery driver. Which is out of order. Driver. Which, is out, which is out of order. Yeah. I mean, I've had I've had stuff delivered once by like an incredibly <laughs> like attractive woman. And, you know, she oh, messaged really? me beforehand and I was like... Very tempted to like, you know, try to co- try to control your boner as you walk to the door <laughs> to, to to pick up the pizza, trying to hide it, trying to strap it to your stomach <laughs> under well, your under your boxes. You know, you know, under like the elastic bands of your boxes when you try when you got a boner and you sort oh, of yeah. try and like hide it so it's strapped to your stomach. And you have to put your t-shirt over the bit that's sticking out the top of your pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not actually what. That's not how it went down. Because I didn't know in advance, right? I didn't know, 
you know, I, don't, it, I think it was like from Amazon or some other delivery company. So it's not like okay. I, you know, knew. I thought you said it was a pizza. No, it was just some stuff delivered, right? Not pizza. Okay. Oh, all right. Go on. Go on. Go no, on. She maybe was, I, maybe she I misheard. Was well above pizza delivery um, levels. <laughs> it's like a tier, apparently. Um, but yeah, she was very like attractive, and I was, you know, had a number, and I was like, do I? Nah, that's weird. <laughs> See, I assume this was before you were with your partner. I assume that this was maybe. when you were back when you back when you were still single. Sing- oh, let's 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 assume <laughs> that it was back when you were still single. Uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, this it is it's very creepy. Like I think. Well, it, here's the thing. I think it, I think it definitely can be. Mm. Um. So here's the thing that 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 this is based. Uh, this specific article that I'm looking at is based on like a survey that they've done in the UK, where it says that 30% of those aged 18 to 24. 29% of those aged 25 to 34 and 25% of those aged 35 to 44 um, have received what they consider to be a romantic or sexual proposition via what was supposed to be like a, a purely sort of business, uh, you know, like sort of, yeah, it could be a pizza delivery or an Amazon delivery or something, you know? Mm. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I like I really I don't want to sound like a fucking incel or some shit, but at some point someone has to fucking put themselves out there and yeah. be like, "All right, love, would you like to go for a drink sometime?" Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know? I, I was going to And it's 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 usually going to usually going to be a dude. And all right, fair enough. Would it be a would it be more appropriate if they said it to you face to face? Or would it actually would it actually be a easier for that dude to sort of clock you when they when they were dropping off the parcel whatever um and then subsequently just send you a text message and that's easier for them in terms of like it's a if you say if if you're not interested it's less of a direct rejection and also from your point of view it's like less awkward in that you don't have to turn the guy down to his face you know yeah. Like I d- I don't know. I'm just I'm just I'm just saying. I'm not I'm not saying that like it's it's all fine and that there aren't any creeps out there. There definitely are. But I'm also saying like, well, how do how do people get together? Like you 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 know, you're working, you see someone, you have their number anyway and you're just like, "All right, love, do you want to get a drink sometime?" Well, I and was then gonna... Sorry, I was if they if 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 then if they're not interested and they say no and that's the end of it, I think no harm, no foul. One of the weirder things about it is that it's like most of the time it's going to be at your home address, right? And yeah, that does that does increase the creepiness. It does increase the and creepiness for a lot of women because they 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 they, because they know where you live. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I There's get that. Some safety in like you know your home address is your home address and you don't like generally give it out to people unless you're very comfortable with them and then to have some like delivery driver creep on you a little bit and like oh you you know and in some cases it won't just be like a mild um you know do you want to go out for a drink but yeah i mean it's it's one of those things in it It can go it can it'd be such a wide range of cases that you know in some cases it's going to be creepy some cases it's going to be fairly like innocent um well absolutely absolutely this this is the thing man like this is you know like in general like i mean no guy wants to be creepy right creepy like, there's no one do. there's no one no 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 of course they don't of course they don't yeah, creepy do. even, creepy cre- no 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 this is the thing creepy guys don't think they're being creepy they think they're being suave or at know. least they're just they're at least they're just shooting their shot I think I think I have definitely seen examples of people being like creeps on purpose. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Fact, maybe, sorry, maybe, sorry, maybe, maybe, maybe that, maybe that, maybe that does happen. Maybe that. All right. Maybe that does happen sometimes. But I, try I think most, yeah, most, most that. times that that the, the, the guys are being more or less objectively creepy. They're trying to be suave, or at least just fucking. 
Yeah. Try trying trying to shoot their shot when you know, like they know the odds are against them. You know. I was gonna say in some cases that I've seen, I think if I if I was to think a bit more about it, they were probably trying to be like edgy, cool rather than creepy. Um, right. In the examples I think of, like trying well, to be like well, the main do you want, character. Do you, want to, do you want to talk about the ex- the examples that you've you've thought of because they they sound fascinating. I think it's just. Um... I don't know, just like... The examples you've witnessed, right? Not necessarily witnessed, but just seen examples of online, just people doing very, okay. very like, creepy, weird things to other people. Um, okay, like what? Like what? I don't know, I saw this, this one, it was like a short video of a guy, and he like, he's walking down, lo- looks like some kind of school hallway, and he like, pulls his face, it's like... Like he he sticks his tongue out really far and pulls like a what I suppose he he must think like is a sinister face, and put, gets his face right in front of like another student, and then he's like he's filming student. himself. Oh. No, no, just like a a, a guy, and he's okay. filming himself do it. So that I would say that's very creepy. Like it is like a creep thing to do, but the guy's like, I don't know if he thinks he's been cool and edgy. You know, like. Oh, oh like, wait, but, I'm the but main wait, character. but uh, <laughs> but hang on, I like I okay, f- no, that that sounds we- that sounds weird as fuck. I, like <laughs> I I'd be curious, I'd be curious to see what the fuck you're on about. But like, I meant creepy in terms of like a sort of male female interaction. Yeah, like I suppose it's that different, sense like, of creepy different types that, of creepy, isn't there? Because the, well, like yeah, Halloween that, that creepy. Sounds, that sounds like <laughs> like Halloween. And creepy. then there's like then there's Jimmy Savile creepy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Savile, <laughs> yeah, Savile creepy. Um, he's a bit of both, actually, to be honest. <laughs> yes. He's he's exuded the creepiness so much that he's fucking he's gone gone beyond fucking. Yeah, fucking. I mean, I searched like videos, for I, I, images of him for that video, I, and his face I, I, is just so creepy, man. Like. <laughs> Creep, yeah. creepy well, I, 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 I remember i remember after after he died and fucking it was halloween like a, maybe a, a month or two after he died and uh i was i remember i remember encouraging dan to go as savile for halloween like, <laughs> to, dress, to dress up as him <laughs> and right. i think he was seriously thinking about it as well yeah. <laughs> like just because that is the creepiest costume you could have you know he, i mean the fact that no one twigged on that he was a creep, despite looking like the biggest creep, like known to man. Well, I think I think I think people did, but he was able to sort of silence people. Like, there, yeah. there's definitely, I've definitely heard this um, this uh, clip from a radio interview with uh, Johnny Rotten. Yeah. In like maybe the late late seventies, early eighties, when he's like he's like sort of saying, "Oh yeah, Savile, everyone knows what he's up to." But they're not willing to talk about it. Yeah, you know, like there's one of Courtney Love saying, uh, "Never go to a p- private party with Epstein or something as well." Um, yeah. So I mean, is it Courtney Love? Oh, it was. Yeah, one of like a famous singer. We're we're, run, we're running a bit low on time, but do you want to hear about this uh, this other thing, or do you want do you want to have a quick um, hypothetical question? Yeah, let's do a hypothetical to end on. Okay, it's quite a simple question, but has a potentially very complex answer. Uh, do you think the world will be a better place or a worse place 100 years from now? Uh, I, I think it'll be worse because I think that's when like the fan will literally be covered in shit, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, we're in, we, Wait, we, why is that? Well, we're kind of in a in a... a a place now where it's like every year because of climate change shit's just getting a little worse um there's fires and floods and extreme weather more and more and you know it might even be as soon as like in the next 50 years where it, it's like properly just a fucking mess and it's like there are parts of the world that we used to rely on for crops and food and stuff that can't sustain the same level of like, yeah, agriculture as they did, and then what the fuck happens then when people can't get fed? 
Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my view on it. Anyway, it's quite a morbid view, but yeah, I'm under no disillusion that people are going to solve any of the problems that we're having currently before then. Um, I see. I see. Uh, I actually, I'm going to take a different view. Uh, I'm going to say that I have um, not not a, not a strong belief, but a hope that uh, the world's going to be a better place 100 years from now. Right. And I think that it's probably going to get maybe slightly worse over the next sort of couple of years and decades. Um, but I actually think that there's a good chance that it'll be a better place 100 years from now. For, for one thing, the uh, world population is um, is predicted to, to level off at about 10 billion um, by the end of this century mm. and actually start declining. Now, now population decline is going to cause a lot of problems, but it, if it's managed well, like the, the thing is, I actually watched um, that old movie uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Soylent Green. Right. Have you ever seen it? No, no. I've, I heard but reference. you've heard of it, right? Yeah. You've heard of it. Everyone's heard of it, right? Yeah, and it's... A, that's I mean, why... I... Is it like food made of people? Well, yeah, that's the thing that everyone knows about it, and that's that's the sort of twist at the end of the movie. It's basically like this was what was made in the 70s. In fact, it was made almost exactly 50 years ago, and it was portraying the current year. So it was right. portraying the exact, the exact year. I think it was... I think it was made in 1973 and set in 2022. Okay, yeah. So, so it was, yeah, it's almost exactly like the nightmare vision of of what the world could become in 50 years, and uh, the nightmare vision is almost entirely based on the fact that the population was going to keep going up and up and up, and completely sort of eat eat everyone out of house and home, and like New York City was going to have like 40 million people living in it and most of them sleeping in like complete slums, you know, and uh, like a, a straw brew, it costs like $500, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Which hasn't come to pass. And I've also read quite a lot of um, Steven Pinker. Uh, if you're not familiar with Steven Pinker, he's this, uh, this kind of academic polymath. Uh, I think he's currently... Uh, professor of psychology at Harvard. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but he's he's yeah he's like a well-known academic. Um, he's basically written like a, a couple of books about like how, in most ways that we can understand, things have on in, in aggregate been getting better and better over the last like uh, centuries and decades. Mm. So there's a lot to be sort of pessimistic about. There really is. But there's also a lot to be optimistic about. I think that probably the next couple of decades are going to be pretty pretty difficult. Um, it also doesn't say in the question where... I mean, it says the world, you know, the world. Right. Uh... I mean, I think, I think that there'll probably be like a, a smaller proportion of the world's population will be in poverty in a hundred years. Mm. Well, I mean, have you ever heard of the theory of the great filter? Um, I have heard of that. Yeah. This is, uh, regarding you, you explain it's about aliens, right? Well, it's, uh, it's about the idea that, you know, considering how vast the, um, universe is and how many different forms of life there must be on various planets. Like the, it explains why, sort of space travel doesn't seem to be a thing um across those across the different universes uh galaxies sorry and um right and i've heard of i've heard of it as uh, in reference to like the fermi paradox um well it's i, I mean I, I think there's a video there's a channel called kurgazat yeah i've seen i've seen this video yeah I, I can never pronounce the name of this channel. Like I think it's maybe a German name, Kurzgesatz. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> and they. Yeah, I've seen the video. I've seen the video that they've done about it. Yeah, they kind of explain that it's like you know, it's like a barrier that 
civilizations that all seem to fail to cross to get to this point. But it is just a theory, right? Um, yeah, it's totally just a theory. It's totally just a theory. There's, there's like, it's like there, there are a number of other possible explanations. One of which is just that there are plenty of other civilizations out there that are as advanced or more advanced than ours, poss possibly by like, you know, uh, possibly by hundreds of millennia. It's just that they're so far away from us that they have no way of contacting us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it, what I was going to say is that it feels a bit like maybe global warming is, is something like a great filter. You know, it's like such a huge problem to solve it, you know it's it can be it's potentially so devastating for like us as a species and the planet um which i mean the planet would bounce back regardless um but we seem just so divided yeah at, at the moment yeah absolutely I, absolutely i i think that like uh global warming is probably the the biggest threat with even though like the idea of potential like nuclear war is um you know, it's probably at its most at its most threatening, certainly since we were born. You know, since the end of the Cold War. Yeah. Um, I would probably say that that global warming is an even bigger threat worldwide. Yeah. Am I? You know, my pessimism comes from the fact that the world just seems to be so. You know, argumentative at the moment, just petty and distracted but it's always been the case hasn't it the you know government and media have always been good at distracting people from real issues to push their own agendas um and maybe it's worked maybe that's like you know it's worked on me um there's probably a lot of good going on around the space of like improving the atmosphere and you know research into carbon capture and all sorts of stuff like that um but i've not been exposed to it because um I haven't searched it out. Well, uh, this is one of the things that, that that Professor Steven Pinker talks about is that uh, most most good news happens gradually, and most bad news happens suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, so if if they say, oh well, like we've reduced deaths by cancer uh, from cancer by like forty percent over the last thirty years, it's like, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, wh when was that ever a headline? You know, whereas if it's if it's like, oh, they might they might oh, the the Russians might invade tomorrow. That's that's front page <laughs> news on every, you know, on every paper. You know, I, I these are these are extreme examples, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Or just like completely fictitious bullshit to, to scaremonger people. Russia's yeah. Russia's. I mean that that water, happens. To turn that, that, frogs gear. That kind of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, there's plenty of that out there. There's plenty of like fucking you know scare stories out there. Hmm. But yeah, okay. So maybe I'm a little undecided, but I tend to. I'm a bit of a pessimistic person. Um, in oh, general. I, I think I. Yeah, I do because I've never got that. I, like, I guess I don't know. I've, I, I, I like to think of maybe this is coming out now after after we've known each other for twenty years, <laughs> like. Like really, like I've always regarded myself as like a very mildly optimistic person. Right. Like, maybe. I mean, real realistic, realistic, but like sort of tending towards the op, maybe slightly tending towards the optimistic. Have you regarded yourself as a pessimist for all this time? Well, I feel maybe more so now than in the past. I I don't know. Maybe it's the the older you get, the more exposure you'd have to other people and to bullshit which um a lot of people seem to uh excrew constantly um so mm. maybe i'm just getting a bit more fed up with people and l l ha less trusting and you know my optimism for you know people doing the right thing is kind of and it might be it might be my own fault for that you know exposing myself to media that makes uh makes me feel that way um, which you know, it's, I think everyone's at fault for too much exposure to media nowadays, due to like how how easy it is to access the media all the time, like on a smartphone or a laptop or tablet. Uh, so, and not me. 
Okay. No, I'm not. You don't do that now. Oh no, I do. I do. I expose myself to like more media than I probably should, but I, never without never without a skeptical eye. You yeah. Know? And I think I think I probably I probably expose myself to a lot less media than most people. I just feel um, like I get a lot of rage bait shit thrown at me. You know, a lot of like I don't know why. Um, I, I I'm on Reddit quite often, and I will put the popular thread on. And there's just a lot of people recording other people just acting outrageously, and you know it works both ways. Like you can you can kind of portray someone in a light that makes them look wrong um, with editing and stuff like that. If you film something, um, and I just yeah I don't know I've just seen so much shit by people both ways. Like why the fuck are you filming this all the time, and why are the people why are these people doing this in the first place. Um, I need to get off ready, man. <laughs> it's well, I I lit I literally quit uh nine gag uh yeah a few weeks ago after having been like a user of that for like more than ten years. I think since like twenty ten twenty eleven. Um, just I mean I think that I think that it's probably a lot worse than than Reddit. But like I, I literally just went on there for like some funny shit to look at, like maybe in the morning when I was coming, just coming, you know, you're coming around, you haven't had your first cup of coffee yet. Yeah. You just grab your phone just for something, something funny, something silly, something lighthearted to look at. That if if uh, if you're still half asleep and you don't take it in that well, that's fine. But just something to look at while you're coming around. Hmm. What made you quit that then? Oh, just the fact that it had become a complete fucking den of like, like misogyny, racism, anti-Semitism. Yeah, like it yeah. was, it was really like, like, at, like, and it was, it was a gradual thing where it got worse and worse. Like at first, it's like, okay, this is a place for like jokes and edgy jokes, mm. so that's fine if you make the occasional like racist joke, that's fine. The whole point is to be a bit edgy, but at some point, it's like. Oh no! Actually, I'm just surrounded by a bunch of fucking racists, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, like really? Like, like this platform has just been overrun by fucking actual, you know, actual fucking Nazis, basically. <laughs> like. Yeah, it's become a, rather than just like a place for edgy jokes, a bit of a racist echo chamber. Um... Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Like, and I, as I say, I was on it from maybe 2011. To a couple of months ago, so so for twelve years, yeah. like, and yeah, it just got gradually worse and worse, and then just a couple, uh, literally a few weeks ago, I just quit because I'm like, nah, I'm just done with this shit. Well, I think that maybe I should go along the same lines with Reddit. I used to use it for gaming but with, quite with, a lot. With, with, and, with, um... with Reddit, I, it's more. I think it's more diffuse, right? Like, it's more like it depends which subreddit you're into. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, I used to use it for gaming, which was my main thing. I used to read about, like, uh, stuff for the games that I played, and I don't play as many games anymore, so it's become, like, a bit of a... I look at funny stuff, but then I also... Because most of my stuff's, like, gaming and games that I don't play anymore, I'd filter to the popular posts, and the popular posts are just... It's, it, it's very toxic, is the... Um, popular reddit like what what the popular stuff is a lot of it is just like you know it's just filming shit that you shouldn't film like out and always like You're like what for example pe- look at these people acting like assholes um in a supermarket or look at these people being disrespectful and rude to so and so or look at these people fighting it's like right why is so be, just... but, okay but un- un- under what circumstances like just uh, well, that's the thing. It's like, what are the circumstances? I mean, I, 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 yeah. What? Okay, so what, what you're saying is like, yeah, okay. These people are acting like you know, assholes, like kind of acting in an unacceptable way. Yeah. But realistically, they're probably they've had a bad day. They're at the end of their tether. Oh, they've got mental health know. issues or something else. Got, right, they've got mental health. Yeah, or yeah, they yeah. They are absolutely. just an they've asshole, got... and they're being an asshole. Like they're racist, or they're like disrespectful or whatever but but what does that prove what what does that what point does that illustrate about wider society like this person's this person's a dickhead let's all pile on them well it's uh, just... yeah maybe they are a dickhead. maybe they are a dickhead but what does that what does that really 
like what relevance does that have to your life yeah well i think what happens is because it's everyone fucking loves clout online they just want clout they just want to get a bit of shitty fame for whatever fucking reason and they'll you know they'll go and do whatever the fuck they want to try and get that and then and it's got to the point where people just record like absolutely everything just to post it online and say oh look at this guy he's got like odd socks uh, it's like put your fucking phone down man all right what i'm getting at and i'm going to close the podcast off at this is put your fucking phone down delete social media jump off a bridge no that like you don't have to do the last bit um yeah, yeah no think... probably don't jump off a bridge but like but yeah but uh, and also and like delete 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 social media except except where you engage with us <laughs> yeah and on that note <laughs> check out our socials uh check us out on youtube uh we're actually on we're such hip- we're such hypocrites <laughs> yeah don't take anything that we say as like um you know this is none of this has been advice at all yeah no this is just this is the rambling this is this is literally the rambling of two morons (laughs) march of the morons um (laughs) yeah you could check us out on patreon uh patreon and um get access to early episodes and bonus episodes um but yeah it's been fun send us an email if you want us to answer any of your strange questions uh jj.hm.com podcast at gmail.com and yeah I've been Hatman and uh, I've been JJ baby thank you for your time today farewell peace out peace out